Um, welcome back. Uh, this is Stefan Mückstein from Energy Lab. Uh, today we'll do a video just on robotic cleaning. So this is a site again uh, of Anaware, where Anaware did the EPC, so the engineering, the procurement, and the construction. And now they're doing that O and M. And one of the critical parts, uh, especially here in this region in the Middle East, um, of the O and M is the cleaning process. And on this site. Our robotic cleaning has been installed and we'll talk to Divya, who is our guest today here, specifically about that. Because this video is being recorded uh, during uh, the corona pandemic, uh, we'll have a slightly different format. So you will see me mainly behind the camera and uh, to keep the social distancing in place. Uh, so I'll move now behind the camera and you will see mainly Divya talk and she will do a brief introduction. Hello Divya, welcome to the channel. Um, before I start the interview, maybe introduce yourself briefly. Uh, sure, Stefan. My name is Divya. I am an O&M engineer at Anaware. I mostly take care of robotic cleaning for all the projects that we have here in Dubai. And I also run my own YouTube channel about sustainability and my sustainable lifestyle. It's called Sustainability Struggles. Fantastic. Uh, so Divya, why are you using robotic cleaning and why don't you do it manually? So there are a lot of benefits to uh, robotic cleaning in comparison to manual cleaning. Manual cleaning would require people to be on the roof constantly for us to be able to keep up a high performance of the solar plant. And that is not ideal, especially in a region like the Middle East where we have really high hot temperatures during the summer months. And so it is best for us to have a robotic cleaning. Also, a robotic cleaning ensures that we keep up a constant performance of the solar modules, of the solar plant in general, because it cleans fairly regularly. It performs uh, more cycles than uh, cleaning cycles than uh, manual cleaning. So it helps us in maintaining the performance of the solar modules. And also, it allows us to work in uh, work in conditions that would uh, otherwise be um, difficult for us to work in especially if we have uh, a situation like the coronavirus lockdown um, if we have robotic cleaning we are able to run the uh, run the robots from anywhere in the world and we are able to keep up the performance of the solar plant makes a lot of sense um, yeah and as you mentioned especially also now during the pandemic uh, you don't need to worry about bringing staff here, at least not large quantities, and uh, then they could infect themselves on the way here or working here at the site. There was a lockdown, just uh, managing whole, that whole uh, process is not easy. So yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, do you use water as part of this robotic cleaning process? No, so the kind of robotic cleaning systems that we are using are uh, water free. They do not require any water for uh, the cleaning process. And that is another advantage of uh, robotic cleaning over manual cleaning because we are saving a lot of water in the process of cleaning, which would otherwise have been used in the uh, in manual cleaning. So we, being a sustainability, uh, being a sustainability company, it only makes sense for us to be doing this. Okay. I, I had these discussions also about robotic cleaning with some of our clients and they were worried that um, cleaning the solar panels without water might scratch them and, and the brushes and the sand and I understand that these brushes are extremely soft and sensitive plus that the dust that actually settles on these panels are, is also extremely soft sand apparently and that there's no scratching of the solar panels is that correct yes that's absolutely correct we also have certifications from the robot suppliers that uh, certify that there will be no uh, damage to the modules uh, there are third-party testing agencies that provide these certifications and we have them for all the robotic systems that we installed also the kind of uh, sand uh, or, or the kind of dust that we have in this region is not abrasive in nature so even if uh, the brushes uh, you know sort of brush the uh, dust off it is not going to cause any scratching on the modules fantastic Divya, we spoke about the dust here in the middle east can you actually show me sort of the impact of cleaning the solar modules uh, and what impact it has in respect to the dust yes of course um, as you can see there are two rows right next to me this one is cleaned robotically it is cleaned every day twice this one on the other hand is clean has been cleaned manually and is cleaned by 
bi-weekly and as you can see the dust on this is fairly less as compared to this so it even comes off much harder the uh, second one which is manually clean right? yes so it it tends to stick after uh, a few, few uh, days have elapsed that it does tends to stick to the module this is also partially with this whole humidity during the evening uh, yes the that's true so um, do, how do you then keep up the performance of the solar pens if you don't use any water for the cleaning so uh, the, the principle behind robotic cleaning is that it needs to clean uh, fairly regularly uh, and it needs to cl uh, clean multiple times a day yeah. so that way it does not allow for the dust to settle down at all on the modules so then it does not require a thorough cleaning action every time it cleans so that is how the cleaning uh, works with the robotic uh, right. uh, with the robots right um, I understand you also sort of analyze um, humidity when the best time of the day is to, to actually run the robots so that during a time of humidity that uh, the, the, the sand doesn't get sticky. Um, do you still occasionally clean manually or is it 100% uh, robotic? So uh, that's uh, one very important for, uh, point for us to note that we need to perform cleaning at a time where there is absolutely no humidity like you mentioned, right? Because otherwise it's going to cause uh, the dust to stick to the modules and it's going to create a whole mush on the modules, which will be very hard for the robots to clean. So sometimes when we have a rain in this region or if we have uh, uh, you know dust storms, we do have to step in a little bit and we have to perform manual cleaning. But uh, that is not fairly regularly, that is uh, probably uh, once in six months or twice in six months at the most, Very depending good. on the weather, uh, weather conditions. Uh, also, some uh, something that I've uh, realized, I, I only mm. came in the, into this industry here in the Middle East, um, and we're working though with a lot of multinationals that are very experienced also from Europe and the EPC costs, so the engineering, procuring and, and construction is significantly cheaper here in Europe, uh, here in the Middle East versus for example Europe because the labor cost is uh, lower but actually the O&M cost is higher here than in Europe because they don't need to do these cleaning processes because the weather occasionally rains so um, it's just an I find interesting anecdote. Um, what is sort of the uh, life expectancy of these robots? So the life expectancy depends on uh, a robot to robot basis but the um, uh, robots that we are currently widely using across all our projects have a life expectancy of uh, 5 to 10 years depends on the maintenance of, that we do on the robots, how we run them uh, how many times we run them, uh, what is the b level of battery discharge that we allow for the robots, how frequently we are able to identify the problems and we are able to replace whatever parts that need to be replaced. Okay, great. Uh, so how do you control these robots? So these robots are controlled using an online monitoring platform uh, that is a part and parcel of the robotic cleaning system and uh, we can uh, see all the parameters of the robot, we can see the status of the robot, where it is and what exactly it is doing, whether it is doing a forward cleaning cycle or a backward cleaning cycle and all of those uh, nitty gritties of robotic cleaning and um, we can also set up a schedule for the robots so every day at that appointed schedule the robots will run even if the online monitoring platform is not available the robots are still going to run so they are very independent in operation uh, unless there are some uh, problems on site the robots are going to clean no matter what Great. okay so as you can see these are the rails that uh, the robot runs on and uh, one of the issues that we face is the robot getting stuck but as soon as the robot gets stuck we can monitor it online and we will get an alert on the online man monitoring platform and we can instantly send somebody on site to resolve the problem How frequently do the robots get stuck? Well, it depends uh, on which phase of uh, commissioning the uh, robotic system we are but uh, in the initial stages it happens fairly uh, frequently because we are still trying to uh, fine tune the uh, the rails and the robotic system but once we have
have commissioned the project completely and we are uh, we have tested the units multiple times we have run them over the modules then we face uh, such issues uh, probably once a week okay and uh, this robot that is just running past you is this the normal speed or is this uh... no so th we have slowed it down so that we can capture the motion of the uh, robot uh, for the uh, for the video okay. but it moves a lot uh, faster when it it is doing a cleaning cycle um, from a sustainability point of view, uh, is there also are there also benefits to use robots? Yes, like I mentioned before, water is one very major point that we need to keep in mind, especially in the Middle East region, where water is of course scarce. Uh, let's say fresh water is really scarce, right? So it, it is very important for us to minimize the usage of water. With these robotic cleaning systems, we are bringing that usage down to zero from probably uh, 10,000 liters to zero, you know, and uh, that, that I think is really great from a sustainability point of view. Also, we do not have, uh, you know, we, we also save on carbon emissions when you think about the delivery of the water on the site and uh, the, the water tanker, you know, making r multiple trips for us to get the water supplies and stuff. So that way, the robotic cleaning system is a, a one-time one thing. Uh, you just have to install the robots and that's it, you're done. Makes a lot of sense. Um, it sounds like it's all positive. I, 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 are, are there challenges with robotic cleaning? Yes, there are. Uh, there are a lot of challenges uh, that go uh, into ro uh, implementing robotic cleaning. One of them being that the site needs to be designed in a way that it is robot friendly. Uh, by that I mean there need to be uh, proper rails uh, for the robot to run on so that uh, we do not uh, end up running the robots on the modules itself. It is not really an issue to run the uh, robots on the modules but it would be better and it would cause a lot less stress on the modules if we run them on rails. So that needs to be keep, uh, kept in mind while we are designing the site. So if you want to have a robotic cleaning system, you need to uh, engage in that uh, thought process from the very beginning and in case you don't do that, it can become very difficult to integrate robotic cleaning with any existing project. So that is one challenge and of course there are issues with uh, you know robots uh, sometimes getting stuck on the modules because of XYZ issues, there might be uh, a, an unprecedented issue with the rails or there could be uh, some sort of um, damage on the mo uh, robot itself which is causing for it to get stuck on the modules so that can cause uh, a lot of uh, loss in solar production because it is causing shading uh, for uh, on a lot of modules at the same time so that that is that those are some of the challenges that we face with robotic cleaning makes sense uh, i think one point is really that you mentioned is important to stress i i, I think it's important to consider uh, robotic cleaning in the design it's also important to consider that for the developer or the, the, the owner of the roof uh, because it has the implication that potentially the design uh, of the system is slightly more expensive because you need additional rains, rails and you might need to award longer term O&M contract uh, to your suppliers to, to, to get the payback on the robotic cleaning because these are long term investments if you only have a very short term O&M cleaning contract, uh, installing uh, the, the, the rails and, and buying the, the uh, robot just does not make sense. So if, if the owner of the system, the project developer, uh, the O&M company think about these things ahead, uh, I think robotic cleaning is a no-brainer. Yes, completely agree with that. Great, great. Thanks so much, Divya. No problem.